The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the August 18th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. You can send me an email. Send it off to Steve at TFN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got a mixed bag out there. The mix goes like this. The Dow has turned just slightly green, but it's flat. The S&P is off 10 points, about two tenths, a half a percent for the NASDAQ 100 is 76. Russell's up six. Semis are down six. Trannies are off 29. New York Stock Exchange is slightly green. Gold is up $6. Silver's up seven pennies. Light sweet crude is up 28 cents. Natural gas is back seven cents. And the 30 year Treasury is up 26 ticks, printed out at 119.15. Leading the charge dollar wise, the upside, you've got Globant SA up 12%, 20 bucks. Freedom Holdings up 30, uh, 12 bucks. That was $20, 12 12%. 12 bucks, 18% for Freedom Holdings. Asmil Holdings up $7, a little over 1%. Dolby Laboratories is up 10%, $7 plus move. And Lockheed Martin up eight dollars. That's nearly two percent. To the downside, it's Booking Holdings off fifty-seven dollars, a little bit less than two percent. John Deere down nineteen, four and a half percent. Keysight Technologies eighteen or twelve percent, five percent for MicroStrategy. That's a sixteen-point move. And Nvidia's off eleven bucks. That's a two and a half percent move. So we've got some movers and we've got some shakers. Let's begin by taking a look at where we're at from a market risk standpoint. Let's go to the thirties first. We'll take a look at the S&P and the Nasdaq 100. We've got the Nasdaq 100 up on our screen. 39 above, 13 below. 39 means above is a trading above, a trade above uh, uh, the t uh, resistance of the TAS market profile, the top of the profile, and below would be trading below support of the bottom of the profile. We'll take a look at the S&P 500. That's going to populate and show us we got 205 above, 86 below. So the 30 minute time frame is uh, bullish out here. Let's go take a look at those other four time frames: 6240 daily and weekly. If we take a look at the 60 minute time frames right now, this is for the Nasdaq 100. It is bearish, so we got a choppy market. 18 above, 54 below. The other four are also in bearish modes out here. Let's take a look at the S&P 500. So the S&P 500 for its 60 minute time frame and the other three, 240 daily and weekly, also in bearish mode, 368 below, 48 above. So it's gonna be a truck trudge higher on any kind of rallies with that kind of market breadth as we speak right now. Nonetheless, let's go take a look at those charts out here. So we had positive market breadth on the 30 minute chart. So let me just do this here, give me a moment. We'll pull up the 30 minute charts. We'll have multiple 30-minute charts here, but let's go start digging into those and see what kind of parameters we want to take a look at. We're going to change screens here momentarily. We'll be on my white background screen. You'll see the eight different charts. Uh, these are each for the 30-minute time frame. Up along the top are the equity futures, the ESENQ, the Dow, and the Russell 2000 below that gold, silver, and then the euro and the yen, just so we get a feel for what's going on intraday. Uh, from a currency standpoint. So the ES mini, you've got a nice Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. You've got a TD9 count bottom. 
out here. And you've got price right now taken on its first level of resistance. That's the top of the current profile. The top of that current profile is at 43.7460. So it's 43.7475 is the real resistance level. If we close above that, odds favor move to 43.8450. 43.8450 is its TD9 count breakdown resistance level. Now, if we pull the curtain back a bit, not back far enough, guess that's all I've got right now. Um, if we close above that, that would then suggest that we move higher. Um, yeah, I don't have it on this chart. Maybe another chart I can pull up all the 30-minute TD9 count breakdown resistance levels. But it close about 43.7475. Is going to suggest that we run up to 43.8450. In the case of the NQ, the NQ has nothing. Got nothing on the uh, nothing on the. Let me just make sure that low 14.6315. This close 14.6175. No, it's got a TD nine count bottom in effect out here, and price right now is trading above the top of its profile 30 minute profile that's up at the 14681 area so the nq should target 14764.25 uh, if price can close above that well we likely have a further rally in the case of the dow it is testing that key level of breakdown resistance on a 30 minute basis that's up at the area of 34 578. It's got a nice roads momentum indicator bottom as well. Price close above that. That suggests higher price. In the case of the Russell 2000, the level that it needs to close above is going to be 187010. So the key levels right now, intraday on a 30 minute basis, 187010 for the Russell, 34578 for the Dow. Now I'm referring to the future contract numbers out here. The NQ up at 14764 and a quarter and 138450 for the ES mini. Those are levels that you absolutely want to pay attention to. Um, here we'll take a look at the other 30 minute time frame charts. Just got a little consolidation within profiles for the gold. Same thing for silver. Uh, the euro was pushing lower. It's attempting to rally. The euro needs to close above 1.0899 to suggest that there is some kind of um, potential for some type of uh, bottom out there. Uh, the Japanese yen uh, right now it's headed lower. If it continues to head lower, there's a there's a level. It could form a TD9 count. Uh, top today, but I think it needs to be traded above where it's at as we speak right now. Let's switch over and take a look at those 60 minute time frame charts. Let's see how easy it is for Stevie to pull those up here because the 60 minute time frame charts had negative market breadth. Now, I only have the ES Mini and the uh, and the NQ out there when we take a look at that. But in both instances, so in the case of the NQ, it's got a TD9 count bottom for its 60-minute time frame. So its level of resistance that it's dealing with right now is at 1470975 level. If price can close above that on an hourly basis, that would be 12 noon as the next bar completion. Then 1477675 would be where it would be targeting. Um, I have what I see here visually is a three drive to a bottom pattern when I look at the hourly chart for um, uh, the ES Mini, the first drive right here at a TD9 count bottom, about 2,200 hours. The second drive is another TD9 count bottom, about 1,900 hours. And then, you know, it's not an exact uh, distance wise, but uh, that's the only pattern I see on the ES Mini for its 60 minute time frame. Price right now is taken on resistance. That resistance level is up at 43, 20, 44, 27, 50. No, it can't be. It can be, but that's not it. What was it picking up? 43.77. Thank you. So 43.77. We close above that on a 60-minute basis. The price will want to try to make its way up to 44.36. So that takes you back to the 30-minute charts out there. On a 60-minute basis, we didn't talk about the Dow. It's got a TD9 count bottom. The Russell 2000 has a TD9 count and Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Market is definitely trying to rally. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60 minute webinar archive he just hosted Forex Strategies and Fundamentals What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report? For all the details and to start your 30 day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 43, S&P's off 3, NASDAQ 100 down 58, Russell's up 9. We're taking a look at the charts here for ENVX. This is for Jimmy inside the Tiger's Den. The question here is, is there any kind of bottoming action that we see on this instrument? So uh, right now what we have is a uh, TD9 count bottom that failed yesterday. But price has made its way back to its breakout level, 1371. That was tested, and so far that is rejected. So the only bottoming action that we would have here, Jimmy, is price making its way back to its breakout level. If we're looking for some type of pattern, an A to B equals CD, a, a Rhodes momentum indicator, TD9 count, nothing there. But sometimes just simply coming back to your breakout level is a place to take a long position. Now, at the same time that price was doing that, Jimmy, on the weekly chart, price was testing the bottom of its weekly profile, 1387. So as long as that holds, that's okay. And on a monthly uh, level, Price got down towards its bullish structured monthly profile area. So the real answer to your question is our bottoming action. That means we got to look at the intraday chart out here. So we'll pull up the 30 minute time frame. What we'll see that this morning here, specifically at 10 a.m., you got a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom signal. Then at 10.30, you got a confirmed TD9 count bottom. And now you have price that's trading with inside profile levels here. What I would say, uh, Jimmy, is that if price can take out its TD9 count breakdown area on a 30-minute time frame, that's at 14.56, then odds favor that this is going to rally further. And it could have bottom with support holding both on the daily and the weekly. But as far as the pattern is concerned, that's the only pattern that I have is price blowing back to levels of support and holding. And those can and be bottoming patterns out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to ENVX. And thanks much for the uh, request out there. And uh, we'll take more. But we'll, well, you know what? We will take one more from Jimmy because Jimmy asked that same question about overstock. OSTK is the uh, ticker symbol. And so what we're looking at on these charts here, folks, is we're looking to see if there's any kind of bottoming signal. 
So we take like an overstock. It formed a TD9 count bottom yesterday. That's being tested, and so far that is held. So you're asking, is there a bottoming action? The answer is yes. Now, if price were to close below yesterday's low, yesterday's low on this instrument is 20 617. Then that pattern will get negated, and that would suggest a run for its breakout level down to 2204. On a weekly basis, you've got a TD9 count top with price testing its uh, oscillator and change line. Now, a close blow 2753 will signal to you and I that it's lost its luster. But um, uh, you got the daily. Now, what the daily should do, what where price should run to, is that oscillator and change line. But we can also see the bottom of its daily profile. Is at 3129. So if you're looking at taking a long position here, your reward risk, your target, should really be 3129 uh, to the upside out there. And um, to the downside, you just simply would close it out if you got a close blow yesterday's low. If we look for overstock at a 30 minute time frame chart, we'll see that it is or has, was, it's trying to form a, a Rosemont indicator bottom, but no bullish reversal candle. Now, here, price is dealing with resistance. That's a 30 minute resistance level. And if pricing closed about 26.62, odds favor the overstock is going to continue to rally. Why? Look at all these other 30 minute rallies. Price has not been able to take out the top of a uh, profile, not except since it uh, did it at 11.30 in the morning back here on August 14th. So it just would add to the idea of a further rally inside of overstock. And that's based upon that TD9 count bottom on the daily time frame, as well as now the 30-minute chart out there. So I hope that that helps you out with regard to those two instruments. Thank you very much for getting us kicked off with regard to uh, requests out there. The next request coming in from Jambalaya. Jambalaya wants to take a look at ticker symbol JD, JD.com. And uh, I think the question was just simply to look at it. So JD.com gaps down this morning. When it gapped down this morning, and as long as it closes below this bar right here, it's labeled bar number one. That was a bar following bar number nine. A close below 33.92 is a very negative thing. Why? Because you're closing below a TD9 count bottom. You're closing below, below a bullish structured profile. You're closing below TD9 count breakout support. So the daily chart looks ugly. The weekly chart says you're trading now below its bullish structured profile. A close below 3371 today would be a close below its red oscillator and change line. That would tell us it wants to go tag that bottom, that Rosemont indicator bottom out here. Now, there was volume there of 62 million shares. So far through today, you're down at 53 million shares. Now, yesterday's volume on this was about 7 million, oh, I'm sorry, about 11 million shares. You're already at seven, so you've got pretty good volume. So this could be signaling that uh, price is going to go tag at least that low. Uh, that low out there, let me give you that, that is um, 31.57. And if price closed below that, Jambalaya, you're looking at 25.77. 25.77 is its monthly, its next monthly TD9 count breakout area. So JD, I think you had some uh, something you were writing there. JD didn't look that good. It really doesn't look that good on the charts here. In fact, it is suggesting to you and I lower price. So I hope that that helps you out. The next request was to take a look at uh, Mara. M-A-R-A -A is a ticker symbol. This for McGuppy inside the uh, Tiger's Den. And his question was, is there any bottoming signal? Well, on a daily time frame, this negated its TD9 count bottom yesterday. So this is looking ugly fugly. Price yesterday closed below its breakout level, 1315. That means its next breakout level could be its price target, and that's down at 916. Now, there's a couple different A to B equals CD patterns that I see in here. So therefore, uh, Bugupi, you would be watching for a bullish reversal candle. If a bullish reversal candle were to form, that would then generate a buy the D point pattern. But short of that, price should go target 916. Another price target would be down at the 1075 to 961 level. That is its bullish structured weekly profile. And with price below that green oscillator and change line, and after taking a look at the daily time frame odds favor, that is its next price target. And we couple that with the uh, monthly time frame chart that shows that, that shows that price is trading below a red oscillator and change line. Of course, we're still early in the month out there, but that is not a good sign either. So I would have to say, with regard to ticker symbol MARA, -A, is there any bottoming signal? It's just the opposite. The signals are that this wants to continue to trade lower out there. So I hope that that helps you out with regard to Mara. Greg wrote in, and I know he wants to take a look at Tesla. So we're going to go ahead and punch the symbol in here. It's going to take a few moments here for the charts to uh, populate. Let me read his question. It goes like this. Would you work your magic on Tesla? 
I'm in, I'm in Tesla and considering taking profits. What support levels do we have that we can take a look at? The next support level on a daily time frame out here, Greg, is going to be down at 195.12. Now, in the case of Tesla, it negated a TD9 count bottom the day after it formed. It negated on August 15th. It's continued to head lower. We've gapped to the downside this morning, so no reason for this to not continue to head lower, with 195.12 being the price target. Just like uh, a McGuppy and I were looking at on his request, same thing here. And the same thing here is that there's an A to B equals CD to the downside. And therefore, if you get a bullish reversal candle, that would generate a buy the D point pattern. That would generate a Gartley buy pattern. That would then signal a move up to resistance. And the next level of resistance right now, because there's no daily profile on a daily time frame, would be up at the 239 level. That's its red oscillator change line. The weekly time frame for Tesla, Greg, shows that we are going to close below a bullish structured weekly profile. That opens up the door for a move back to 164.35. That doesn't come into play until we know what happens at 195.12, or of course, if there's a bullish reversal candle on the daily time frame. And on a monthly time frame, Tesla back inside his profile levels. That opens the door for 144 to 165. So it looks like Tesla wants to head lower, 195.12 being its next price target. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're going to take a look at the New York Stock Exchange. Advanced decline oscillator Peter inside the Tiger's Den was asking if there was any kind of divergent pattern. What he's referring to here is referring to back when the uh, bottom, the New York Stock Exchange, uh, made its last bottom out here. It was back in the time frame of March. Uh, of March. And what we can see here is that price was moving lower at the same time that we had higher lows inside the advanced decline oscillator. So that's the kind of divergent pattern that Peter was asking about. We had the same kind of pattern that identified the uh, lows back in September of 2022. Price was moving lower. The advanced decline oscillator was making higher lows. We do not have that pattern just yet. What we do have is a extremely oversold market condition out there. And so this is leading into my next question from Inno Visual. It says, hey, I missed the, uh, I missed the uh, opening of the show. He wants to look for a place to go short inside the NQ. I simply want to point this out to you. And if you've got this chart, you know, uh, you know you've got access to this uh, tool out here, go check it out. Uh, because when you get below that minus 250 level, you're looking at, you're anticipating more of a oversold condition being worked off. The question is, when is that going to begin? Because it has to begin. And it doesn't have to begin today. It doesn't have to begin on Monday, but it has to begin. So you're getting more towards the the area of, um, of some type of counter trend move to work off that condition. And it could take days could take a week or so you know these oversold conditions back here in September and really back here in March of uh, this year they didn't happen overnight they didn't take place in a couple of days out there but those are when you form those divergent patterns and I don't know if we've got a divergent pattern that's going to form out here we could be all the way back here as an example back here being like July of 2021 where you just simply made that V bottom on that advanced decline oscillator not necessarily price although it did so in, in price as well out there so I don't know which one of those what I do know I don't need to know which one right now I know and I'm just simply sharing with you even though I'm belaboring the issue is that the markets are extremely oversold. So we went from the extremely overbought level now down to the extremely oversold area. So I wanted to preface it that way. Now let's go take a look. Let's switch over to the white background charts. Let's look at the NQ. I'll do that relatively quickly here because we already did that in the uh, in the beginning of the show. So now we're looking for any kind of bottom signals here. Well, the bottom signals inside the NQ come from right now. They come from a 30 minute chart which has got a, uh, uh, a, uh, a TD9 count bottom pattern and the 60-minute uh, chart that also has a TD9 count bottom pattern. So what we're watching here, if you're asking me, well, where would be the place to go short today on an intraday basis? I'd be watching 14,764 to 14,776. Those would be two areas that I would be watching. But then I'd be looking at, I see at 14,730, You've got a TD9 count breakdown level on a 10-minute chart. And the price closes above that, and then uh, that's also the same breakdown level on a 15-minute chart out there. Hmm, something to consider that perhaps the counter trend move is beginning. But only close above those levels would really suggest that, or at least suggest that to Stevie. Now, if we take a look at the NQ here, and I can change this to all different types of time frames. So on these time frames, for the most part, what we can see on the NQ on a 30 minute basis is that it's TD9 count breakdown resistance areas have been holding out there. So that key level, if you're going to ask where's the real area to short from, I'd have to go to the, well, this is the 30 minute chart and then to come back to that 14, 6, 14, 764 area. So that'd be one place to consider. I'd be looking for a pattern uh, perhaps there. If we go down to a 15 minute time frame chart, this again, well, this will put up all the TD9 count breakdown resistance levels there. So you can see how the market has responded. If you close above one, you're likely to head a bit higher out there. If we move this from a 30 to a 60, we're going to take a look at the hourly chart out here right now. Just take a look at breakdown resistance and get back to that 14,776 area. So uh, where's another area to potentially go short? Another area to potentially go short, and I'll go ahead and change screens here. So if you give me a moment, we'll do that. Uh, I got to get to the right spot to do that. And this would be on more of a multi day rally, I would think. And that multi day rally, the place that you would look at for going short the NQ specifically is 1509850. Not to be exact or anything, but to be exact, 1509850 out there. That is the apogee pivot point that came in. I think it might have been on Tuesday of this week out there. And that is likely to be an area of resistance, or that would be a 
pretty good place to potentially take a, a short trade. So, you know, I, I know you want it on the queues. Really, it is. We've got to take a look at the intraday charts here for the NQ, which we just did. And I hope that that answered your question with keeping in mind, keeping in mind that the markets are in that extreme oversold condition. And we should expect and anticipate some kind of uh, counter trend uh, move out here. So let's go to our next question. The next question coming in from uh, Dan inside the Tiger's Den. Dan want to take a look at KRE. So let's get over to those charts here. And as we speak right now, this is the uh, regional banking uh, ETF uh, sector out here. Today is going to become bar number eight of a TD nine count pattern. Now, bar number nine has to complete on Monday in order for this pattern to uh, confirm. What does bar number nine on Monday have to look like? You need to see a close below this price level, 45.30. If you get a close below 45.30 on Monday, because um, there's no way that it's going to, bar number eight is going to complete no matter what. You'd have to have such a miraculous rally um, out here. So you're not going to get that. I also see a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. So a Gartley buy pattern inside the regional banking um, uh, sector here. That's assuming that today we do get that bullish engulfing candle uh, um, or bullish reversal candle by day's end. So I don't know what it's going to look like. But as we speak right now, typically 90% of, the of the time when you get a confirmed bar eight, on a TD9 count, you get a uh, you get a completed pattern out there. But still, at this stage here, I've given you the data, the number that you need to look at on Monday. Uh, but if you get that bullish reversal candle, the TD9 count doesn't really matter. In other words, having two bottoms doesn't necessarily make it better than one uh, bottom out there. Of course, I could use two bottoms. Yeah, you, you, you don't see too much in the rear on Stevie. In any event, we take a look at the weekly title. That was too much information, but it was offered. If we take a look at the weekly chart out here, price remains above the top of its weekly profile. So that's bullish. And if we take a look at the monthly time frame, eh, right now you've got price consolidating with inside its uh, profile level. You can see here how price pulled back Pulled back to the breakout level. It might have been Jimmy D that was asking me a question about an instrument. Could have been Overstock or I don't remember the other one now. Uh, but I said, you know, when price pulls back into a breakout area, that can be a bottom. That's really the pattern is that bottom or that breakout level holding. That's what took place on a monthly basis. So looks to me like the regional banking sector. Thank you, ENVX. Uh, the regional banking sector is uh, getting ready to a bottom. Now, what price should do from here, Dan, is price should make its way up to the bottom of its daily profile. That's the first level of resistance, 46.55. Now, that's on that time frame. On a 30-minute time frame, we'll see a roads momentum indicator bottom. Price right now trading above the top of its profile. And a close at um, 12 noon above 44.89, that's a slightly bear structure profile, is going to suggest that price wants to go target 45.97. So I'd say 45.97 is in the cards out there. If we get that close, you've got that bottom again. The key is going to be, well, really, no key. If you get that bullish reversal candle today, you've got your Gartley buy pattern. So, Dano, I hope that that helps you out with regard to the regional banking sector. We get back from this break, we're going to take a look at ticker symbol IAC. This is also for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. And uh, it could it, could, it needs some more help today. But it's got a Rose Mintum indicator signal triggered, but no bullish reversal candle just yet. But there's some more time left in the day. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We'll take a look at IAC Inc. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at LAC, not IAC. My apology. LAC is uh, Lithium Americas Corp out here. And it is an ugly looking stock chart. What did it do yesterday? It negated a daily TD9 count bottom. What is it going to do this week? It's going to negate a weekly TD9 count bottom. But where's the next level of support? That's really the question right now. And that's at 1546. We're trading at about 1616 as we speak. So 1546 is the next area of support. Dan, if that level fails, we're likely headed back to $2.39, or at least that's the next level of support that I have for this instrument. Now, on a weekly basis, let me see, what are we doing volume-wise? So we've done 8 million shares, and the swing point has 10.9 million shares. That swing point is this TD9 count bottom here. But that could set up an A to B equals CD to downside. Let's do this. Let me, if you give me a moment. We'll switch back to another set of charts out here, my black background set of charts where we can draw in the A to B equals CD pattern out here. So this is the weekly time frame. So for the A to B equals CD, there's a couple of them that we could draw in here. One looks like this. The swing point that we're using is the high from November 2021. We move all the way down to May of 2022. We then retrace into a high that forms in August of 2022. That was a 0 0.618 retracement. The one-to-one -one A to B equals CD out there gets you to 1058. Now, the volume on that swing point was 24 million shares. When we closed below it, it was with 8 million, then 10 million. Uh, today, as I said, we're going to do 8 million shares. So we're closing below that swing point with lighter volume. Does that mean that it won't go fulfill the A to B equals CD to downside? The answer there is no. This is the pattern that's in place. The A to B equals CD pattern is really does two things for us. It is a price projection tool. And then what it helps us to understand is as price approaches at least the one-to-one -one level, then we start looking for bullish reversal candles. That is when we may get a buy the D point pattern. Well, we'll get a buy the D point pattern if we get a bullish reversal candle uh, out here. And there's other A to B equals CD patterns, but no reason for us to draw those in. So again, back to the black background charts out here. When it comes to LAC, Lithium America Corp, its next level of support is 1546. And a price closing below that, it gets extraordinarily ugly out there. The next request in, uh, from the Tiger's Den from ELO, he wants to take a look at XHB. Now for, oh, what did I do? What did I do? Huh. Where did I put that on my other charts? Oh, 
Well, we're going to just have to go put it in. XHB, and then we'll switch over. So let me get X, XHB. And XHB is the uh, home builder's ETF out here. Oh, okay, great. So if we, is that what you wanted? Was XHB the ETF? I'm going to have to assume the answer there is yes, but if not, just slap me upside the head. All right, so what do we want to do here? We want to go to my other charts to see if we can find any kind of bottom patterns. We don't see anything here on the daily time frame. Um, I don't see anything at all. So let's go switch over to those white background charts. And you're welcome, Coda. And as we take a look at XHB for ELO, today's going to become bar number seven. Maybe uh, Monday through Wednesday of next week, you get a TD9 count bottom. I say maybe. Uh, it's next level of support. Well, shoot, it's all the way down here at 68.45. You're below daily profile. I don't have anything else. I've got a swing point that it's going to maybe trade into on a daily basis. So you'd be watching July 6 out there. Now, volume on that swing point is 3.9 million shares. Yesterday, you did... Uh, 7 million shares today so far. They're at 1.7, so it's got about that 3 million share type volume. So that would be an area to be watching, that swing point. The weekly chart shows that we are below profiles and below its green oscillator and change line. 68.39 is actually its nice downside price target. And the next price target to the downside on a monthly time frame is 75 even Steven. Now, on a intraday basis, ELO, you did get a TD9 count bottom pattern out here. And so what you want to want to watch, if this is going to rally further versus head lower, you would see a close above 79.95. You'd see two consecutive closes on a 30-minute basis above that. Otherwise, that's your resistance. That's where the sell the dipsters or sell the rallysters are at is about the set, well, really between 79.69 and 79.95. But if price were to close above the 79.95 level, 81.26 would become the next price target area. But overall, the daily, the weekly, the monthly, they're all suggesting that this thing wants to trade a bit higher. Now, with regard to consecutive days to the downside out here, what we've got is um, this is going to become, it looks like we've had three consecutive days. And this typically rallies after three to four consecutive days to the downside out there. So it wouldn't be unusual to see a couple day rally, but that doesn't mean that it's bottomed at all. So I hope that helps you out with regard to XHB out there, ELO, and thanks so much for the request. Inside the Tiger's Den, I think Coda wanted to take a look at ARK, A-R-K-K, -K, and I believe the question was maybe looking for some bottom signals. Well, the only bottom signal out here, much like when we took a look at um, – those first two instruments, I think it was ENVX out there. The only bottom signal here is price pulling back to its breakout level support at 39.35. Now, the actual low this morning, 39.35. you got to love that, and it's bounced off of that. Is that a bottom? It could be. If you're asking me, is there a bottom pattern, no. It negated a TD9 count bottom a couple of days ago. Uh, I don't even see an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. So what I see out here is wave number four, letter D. Of course, that can't be confirmed until we get a higher low. But price getting back and testing a key level of support, that was its daily breakout level. The weekly chart says I'm going to close below uh, profile support, bullish in structure. So that says I want lower price. And for it, that would be 37.42. So we'd say if there's if price if price fails to hold 39.35, we see how important that was, how that reacted, how price reacted at that breakout level out there. If that area fails, then I would say 37.42 becomes the likely price target for ARKK. Of course, you know the routine out there, Cody. You've really got to take a look at probably the top 10 instruments inside of ARKK, see what they're doing out there, because that would be uh, helpful uh, to you. So I hope that that helps you out with regard to that request. Now, I believe I've taken care of everything inside the Tiger's Den, with the exception of taking care of Mr. Bill. And now we're going to go do that. Mr. Bill wanted to take a look at the horizontal trading range boundary lines out there. I know he thought I forgot about them, but I did not. So he was asking about the S&P 500. Mr. Bill, I hope it's okay if I start with the Dow out here. Uh, and then uh, and maybe during the break, what I'll be able to do is just make sure I've got the right charts there for the S&P 500. If we take a look at the Dow, remember, we're in a total oversold condition. What has the Dow done? Well, the Dow found resistance at its midpoint, primary trading range midpoint. That was at 35,463. Those are the dotted lines. And now price has pulled back to a rising trend line. That's off of the low that formed out here in October of 2022, the low that formed in March of 2023, and that ran into lows back here in May 
of uh, 2023 as well, as well as a move lower back in July of 2023. So they've got a key level of support that's being tested. The bottom or its next horizontal trading range number is 34,152. We got down pretty close to that. So you've got the Dow at a key area of support. It would not surprise me to see a rally to work off that oversold condition. You could even get a rally where the Dow would make its way up to 35,463. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. But if price takes out this rising trend line, if price does close on a weekly basis, we're looking at weekly horizontal trading range boundary lines. If price closed below 34,152, that could be signaling to move back to the 31,530 area. Yes, there would be some intraday support uh, or some some intra weekly support, if you will, whatever that means at 32,841. So those are the horizontal trading range boundary lines for the Dow out there. We're going to try to take a look at those for the S&P when we get back from this break. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Hey, before we go take a look at the S&P 500, I had noticed something. Uh, we were taking a look at the Dow. We are taking a look at the primary trading range boundary lines. We took a look at the trend line. Uh, so we, we found that the Dow should have found support on that chart. We take a look at the daily time frame chart. These are for the U.S. cash indices out here. We could also see that the Dow has pulled back to its breakout level of support. We've it, Because of requests that have been asked uh, the, uh, for this morning to take a look at charts, we have uh, seen two or three instruments where they pulled back to those levels of support that breakout level which has been in essence a bottom so what this is signaling to me at least what the Dow is signaling to us is that that oversold rally should really be underway today 
should begin. And where could price move up to on the Dow? Well, you could get all the way up to that 35, 183, that green oscillator and change line. Now, it's a Dow that's going to have to be all the strength. The S&P 500 is saying to you and I, wants to get to 41.56. The NASDAQ 100 says 13.059. The Russell says 17.44. The semis, I don't even know where they want to head to. I've got to really scrunch the chart out here. I don't even have that level. Um, and the uh, transports, 13.810, 12.604, the composite. And the interesting thing here about the New York Stock Exchange, if it forms a bullish reversal candle today, it'll confirm a Gartley buy pattern. So just watch the New York Stock Exchange at day's end out there. So I just wanted to share with you, at least with regard to the Dow, what it's doing, the levels of support that it's at, and where it could likely head to. Now let's go back to those black background charts for a moment. We'll pull up the S&P 500. We'll take a look at its horizontal trading ranges. Those are the horizontal lines that you're going to see here momentarily. And what we can see is price, uh, when it broke through a couple of days ago, the 44, 20, 70 area year, uh, there were 43 opens or closes at that price point. So breaking through that, and that's a pretty significant level. Price is likely to head down to the next horizontal trading range number. That's at 42.59. And below that, price is then likely to target its rising channel, rising trend channel. Now, where is that at from a price standpoint? We're in the 4150-ish plus. Just depends on when price might get down there on a, a daily time frame. So those are your horizontal trading range, Mr. Bill. We got them both for you for the S&P and the Dow. Took care of all the requests that came in. So, folks, I want you to have just simply a fantastic Friday, a fabulous weekend. And please join me again on Monday, 11 o'clock sharp. I believe it's going to be 11 o'clock. I know I've got to drive over to Naples that day. We're going to try to make it an 11 o'clock sharp. If not, it'll be 8 in the morning. Folks, have a fantastic weekend. Take care.